If I don't mute the mic, still rocking out and enjoying the music, playing with a new lighting setup, I hope you can tell it's just a little bit brighter, while back here it's just a little bit darker. Again, just revamping and making everything better all the time, hopefully. So if you're new out there, say hi. If you can't hear me well, also say hi. I'm messing with the microphone on this side this time. Playing with a whole new setup. Didn't even get all the stuff completely set up. Uh, Actually, my mom is in town right now, so we're trying to get a lot of stuff set up for my grandmother and a few other things. So, like usual, this just kind of came back really quick and wasn't quite as prepped as I was hoping. We're going to record a few other episodes later this week, so as I do that, we'll end up seeing a little bit more. But if you're new out there, if you're not new out there and just out there and want to say hi, please say hi. This is our geek out, and what that means is... I'm here to answer your geek and technology questions. This is a live Q&A. We have our bits and bytes that we do separately, where bits are just little five minute things where we talk about like how to turn on accessibility and Dropbox or AirDrop and different things like that with your phone. And bytes are where we go into more in-depth topics. Um, and with those, we spend you know somewhere upwards of around 45 minutes. We have a good one starting out there with uh, League of Legends, but we do have more technology-based ones and Apple Watch one coming. And then we have our happy hours, which right now we put on hold for just a little bit, but make sure you check those out. Those are our fun beer uh, and wine, craft beer um, episodes, and we're going to be adding more to that because now we have a, a new fun toy called the ATEM Mini Pro, which I have in messing around with. So... Um, and we'll be revamping the audio so that I don't have to be right here and talk with my fun radio voice. But having said that, my mom says hi. Hi, mom. <laughs> and we're going to switch on over. I'm going to unlock my iPad over here and bring up some of the uh, things going on. If you guys have a question, then by all means, put a cue in front and then type your question, and that way I'll know and see that there's a question, and I will try to get those as soon as possible. If you're catching this on the replay, keep in mind, you can still ask those questions. Just send them through our Facebook page, send them through you know, our YouTube, whichever way you want, and just ask those questions. You can ask them on, on the replay by still doing a queue and we'll see it, or you can just message us, and obviously you can follow us that way at glitch2600. That's our Facebook on YouTube. If I were to be prepared and have that up, you would see, you could subscribe to us on YouTube by going here or hover over that with your smartphone and take a photo and it'll go, hey, do you wanna go there and check it out? And you say, yeah, and subscribe. We'd love to have you subscribe. We're gonna start simulcasting here shortly. In fact, we'll be doing a test probably this week where I'll be simulcasting at the same time as I work out more of the A10 Mini and A10 Mini Pro. But I'm getting a few questions in here on my on my iPad at the same time. But just again, if you don't want to be called out on the air, you could just still send a message personally and then uh, leave it anonymous and and just say you just say you don't want to be on the air. And I'll answer your question. I will say someone sent in this message, and here's the answer. So lots of new things going on this week. There's still been more stuff with with Big Sur for Apple as it's been. Working on that, the first public betas have started to hit for uh, iOS 14 and the widgets and all that. So we're starting to see all of that go out. Of course, I, the one time I want to find my news app, I can't find it, which figures. You know, ask the tech guy every once in a while. We can't find the stuff we're looking for. 
because it gets buried. <laughs> but here we go. If I bring that up here, that's just some of the stuff that's been out. There's been lots of stuff. Um, one of the things I want to bring up while people are working from home and a lot of stuff, you see those webcam covers, they are important to have on your laptops and pop them up because there are ways to hack into that and take photos and security wise. So people, I have been asked, and that's been one of the questions is, do you need a, those covers? Should I cover up my webcam? If you're not using it, yes. They sell those, they're very cheap. You can get them for free at so many different events, but you pop them up there. And if I had one, I'm, I'm not using my webcam, so I'm using my, my camera camera. So hopefully this looks like I'm looking at you. But on my webcam, which is right below, because I have my laptop right there, you can put a little cover and slide it across. So it just goes and covers it up. Why is that important? Because if I were to hack into your webcam, what could I possibly see? Well, aside from your privacy and seeing you and, and all that fun stuff, I could also maybe see you writing down passwords, maybe see your keyboard if it's tipped down. I can maybe see your bank account, you know, if you have your, your checkbook out, stuff like that. Um, there's also ways to control the audio and protect those. There's software you can install, but a simple webcam cover gives a little bit there and then a lot of people will disable their internal microphone. And there, like I said, there are ways to turn those on. There are apps that will monitor it. A good antivirus will do that also. But when people ask, is that important to have? I do say yes. Are you as susceptible on an iPhone and iPad? Not as much. There, there's a piece of software out there or, or stuff that us security guys use called Metasploit that can do that. And if you have that, then there are some exploits if you have older versions, if you haven't stayed up to date on those iOS updates or those Android updates, same problem. I'm not mutually exclusive to the fact of whether it's an Android or an, an iDevice, you know, an Apple device, they both can be hacked for that. And the more you keep that updated, the better that is. Can you introduce problems when you update? Yes, it's always possible. But most of the time, especially if you see those security ones, it's to you know, essentially stop stuff like that. But with stuff like Metasploit, which is a, a good uh, it's not just a hacker tool, it's a computer forensics where the uh, IT security guys can use that to, you know, see if, the, if these things are able to be exploited. And when that happens, you know, we can see if we can get into an iPhone's camera and stuff like that. Now, it's not as likely for an iPhone and iPad. It's not that it's impossible. It's, it's definitely possible. It's just not as easy as, say, a laptop because people don't update their laptops or have as much protection. They have a tendency to open things up on them because that's how the firewalls are built. But you can't really do that as well on iPhones and Android devices, but it's a little easier on Androids. So is that important? Yes, yes it is. And you should get a cover and that software for it. Just like it's important to have antivirus because of stuff like ransomware. Um, some people will go, hey, I'm on a Mac. Yes, you still need antivirus. I'm going to always say that. I once had a, a case where someone had ransomware. They were they were getting it for their an IT person, and was stopping. And, and you'll see ransomware in the news. Probably wondered what it was, and I'll, I'll get to kind of what that is. But they were helping out a, another company. They they were getting paid, and they were infested with with ransomware and was trying to figure out how, what are we going to do. We don't want to have to pay the money to unlock our computers. That's basically what ransomware does. It encrypts all the files on your machine or a large chunk of them and then pops up a thing and says, hey, hey, if you want the key, then pay us this money in Bitcoin and we'll give you the key to unlock it. So imagine if someone came to your house and put locks on every single one of the doors, both inside and outside, and kept the keys. You know, great, you might be able to crawl in the window, but now all these other doors are locked. That's what ransomware is. So... It's important to have protection for that on the Mac and PC because people don't realize how fast it can operate. So he went, hey, I got this USB stick. I'm going to put protection on there and have it clean out, and it's going to be faster than the antivirus well, or faster than the virus, the, the ransomware, the malware. You know, because I've got this antivirus clean, I, I warned him. 
and he's a good friend. He plugged it in, and the entire drive was unreadable. That fast. Computers are fast nowadays. Moore's Law. Look it up. You'll see computers are fast. And because of that, it can process those small files very, very, very quickly. And that's how ransomware protects itself. Now, a good antivirus out there will look for ransomware and encryption. If you can turn on FileVault or BitLocker on your PC, if you're a if you're a Mac user, it's FileVault. It is harder to encrypt on top of encryption. Your machine will slow down. You'll notice it. There's something on the Mac called ransomware. Um, where W H E R W H E R E, like where, as opposed to where W A R E, which is what the bad stuff is. And it will let you know if something's trying to uh, get on there. PCs, good antivirus. You know, we'll do protection there. Intego does both a Mac and PC one that does great protection. You can get Norton and all those ones that are a little bit overpriced, in my opinion. A good Kaspersky will protect you um, for different brands. You, you can get pretty pretty good protection there. Um, you don't need the sun, moon, and, and stars. Really good antivirus that's looking for that ransomware. And then don't open up suspicious emails because most likely ransomware gets in, not from necessarily going, it, it could get from going to a, a bad website, but normally it's from, you know, phishing attempts, emails where they send you a thing and say, hey, you got this package tracking from UPS and you weren't expecting a package from UPS. Yeah, I know what the days with Amazon, we're always expecting a package from UPS because I got one today. But if you weren't expecting one and you opened it up like, hey, it's Christmas for me, someone's probably just not sending you that package. If you weren't expecting it and don't know the address, don't click the zip file that's in it or the link because it's probably ransomware. That's called a phishing attempt. So that was me on my little thing on there. What I'm really liking for news right now, you know, there's lots of stuff going on between how Uber and Lyft are working with uh, within California laws because of COVID. You know, there's NBC Peacock is coming, um, which is their streaming service from NBC, thus Peacock, because they're known for their Peacock one. The streaming service is coming to iPhone, iPad, Apple TV. So you'll see that. I'm still a big fan of uh, YouTube TV. Interface isn't as great as you would like, but unlimited DVR, so digital video recording. If you go back a few episodes, someone asked that question on Apple TV, and we kind of got into that information. Um, there's a new uh, crossover coming from Nissan that I'm pretty excited about. I'm an electric car driver, so seeing a crossover electric, so an SUV, I'm pretty excited about. Not just a hybrid, but a crossover electric. I'm really excited about the electric trucks coming. Extremely, you know, there. I loved my truck. I Not that my little car is not great for my tooling around, but I'm really excited about the trucks. And if you follow esports, Overwatch League's online-only playoffs are set to start in September. So that's just some news that's kind of going on, you know, roundabout right now. So, again, we'll have more news and we'll do more cool stuff and talk more on it, you know, on a later episode. We're, we're going to keep tonight semi-short, semi-sweet, unless people start asking a bunch of questions. If you start asking a bunch of questions, then it won't be so... So uh, short and sweet, if you, <laughs> but otherwise we will. One of the things that kind of came up was what do you do when setting up an iPad, iDevice, all that for people who are a little bit older? So I'm gonna grab a piece of equipment here. So I'm gonna semi-step off screen and we've got an older iPad because people like to repurpose these. so. It's an older iPad. We're not going to show what's on the back there, but it's an older iPad. There's tagging on it. You know, it is luckily a Lightning, which is that there. It's not USB C, like the uh, new iPads or the iPad Pros. But it's it's a it's an older iPad. It can only go up to iOS 12.4.8. But a lot of people want to repurpose these, and in my case, the question actually came up from my mom about whether we can repurpose this 
for my grandma. My grandma's in her 80s, and she she spends time on on Facebook, YouTube, you know, all that stuff. But the question is, what should you do when you're setting that up? And especially setting it up remotely. Well, what comes into play a few things when we're setting it up is remotely is you got to set up an Apple ID, which the nice thing is the old ones, if you don't already have an email address, you know, or you have access to them, you can set up a new iCloud one, which is kind of what we did. Then you set up iMessage and all that and transfer in contacts. And we'll go over that real quick because it's easier to show. So I'm going to grab this connector so I can plug all in. You're going to see me doing the stuff on the fly. I was going to have a second camera to bring it down, but you know, ran out of time because I was working on this. <laughs> so if we open this up. And now I'm normally a big advocate of using alphanumeric for your getting into your iPad, you know, or a six digit one. When they're an older person, and, and when I'm talking in your 80s, they're probably, they could be susceptible to phishing and all that, but they're probably only doing so much with their iPad. And sometimes any passcode is better than no passcode. So in this case, we're using a four because, you know, I realize I was putting in mind because it's just a level of protection and still gets them in. So I'm going to flip over to the iDevice here. And maybe if it shows it, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll see my other eye device. Let's try this again. It should show up in here, but this one might be just old enough that it doesn't want to go in. Trust. We gotta set up the trust on here to see if it pops in. Of course it hasn't. So that's embarrassing. It's just old enough that it doesn't want to work on here. So we're going to have to do this more creatively than before, which is funny. Let's try this one more time. When in doubt. There we go. Now we can switch over to it. We're going to show the, the iPad. Now I brought down a few things. So this is something I'm doing for my grandmother. And you'll notice really quick, the base setup has a lot more icons on the desktop. I decided to take a bunch of stuff off that I didn't think was important and I threw it into a folder. Thus, that I named for right now, folder. Now, instead, the smart part of me will press and hold till it shakes, click on it, and then rename it Apple Stuff. Because why? Because it's Apple Stuff. So very fancy, but you'll notice in there I popped in the find my iPhone, find my friends, podcast, stocks, Apple TV. She's not using home automation. She's probably not doing photo booth or messing with advanced files. So I put it in there and it's a nice repository to move some of this stuff into. Now she might be interested in news up here, reminders, notes, maybe even maps, possibly the calendar, clock, all things that she may be interested in. And I left that tips up there specifically for this reason where across the bottom, I made sure to spread out where Messenger is from Skype. And it's not that I expect her to do much with Skype because the thing with Skype, if we do this, I'm just gonna go picture and picture me, yay. <laughs> the thing with Skype is that it's not the most intuitive. I won't say it is. Um, so for home users, I want it set up on her device so that people calling in for her will automatically launch the app. It'll pop up and I turn on notifications. So if I were to try to Skype her instead of FaceTime for some reason, it would pop in and go, hey, you know, we need to, uh, here's Skype. Do you want to launch it? And she can go, yes. I don't expect her to be dialing out on it because it's not that intuitive. But she does like to spend some time on Facebook. She's a serial, you know, poster on people's uh, wall as opposed to Messenger. So now we also put Messenger on there so that she can 
Outlook and Message and get group chats that way, especially now with Messenger Rooms where we can do stuff like that. But we turned around and set her up. Now I do have to do a little bit more in there where we add in additional accounts, you know, under messages. We have one set of contacts for, but uh, I don't have her being received at all of them, but she will. And we'll probably turn on that filter unknown senders. And we set up her FaceTime. And even on iCloud, we went and synced a lot of stuff. But one of the things that I'm a big set on here is I made some changes to the control panel. So you don't see it up here. Right now, I left the control panels the same. But if we come back here and go to Control Center and customize controls, one of the things I'm going to pop up, I took out home already, but I'm going to add this text size. Now I can add other things in there, which is nice because when I swipe down from the top, it puts them in there. But why do I want that text size? Well, this text size is fine for my eyes, but she, if I take this up there, might want something a little bit more like that to make it easier for her eyes. And that's one of the nice new, you know, or not necessarily new features, one of the features you can do. So before I give that to her, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna size it down for me for right now. I could also put these accessibility shortcuts, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. If we were going to display and brightness, we could also change this auto lock. I am normally a big advocate of locking pretty quickly, but for some older people that might, two minutes might be a little aggressive. I'm not a big fan of it never locking because she could leave it somewhere, but I'm probably gonna pick somewhere in that five to 10 minute range. So I'm gonna work with my mom and figure out which one we should do. But for now, I'm gonna set it to five minutes so I don't forget. Two minutes is a little too fast. You know, even though it's forever as a kid, two minutes is forever in a day. On a computer and with five minutes might be, she might go grab a, a drink of tea and then come back and it'd be locked. And since this doesn't have touch ID, she'd have to put the passcode in every time. It doesn't have face ID or touch ID. Because of that, you know, we'd have to keep unlocking it. So I'm gonna set it to five. We may set it to 10, but that's one thing to put on there. The other thing is you'll see this option under display and brightness, you can still get that text size. That's where I was doing that other button where you can kind of see we already sized it. But there's a section for this bold text. Normally this text right here where it says night shift, auto lock is not as bold. It's not as dark. I turned on bold text ahead of time and you should keep in mind this will cause your iPad to reboot and restart. I turned that on so that text would be just a little bit easier to read. So that's one of the sections I turned on. One of the things you could also do is come in here under general afterwards and come down to accessibility. Under the accessibility menu, you have all sorts of stuff depending on what your older generation person needs. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. We all get older. I wear glasses. Maybe for me, because maybe I'm blind, voiceover is an important thing where I can have it speak to me, the menus. Maybe that's better. If they're more of a, an audio person, that might be the trick. So you can turn that on, that's a voiceover. And it kind of tells you in here, hey, speaks an item on the screen, tap once to select an item, double tap to activate. So there's little things like that. Now, there's another thing called Zoom. What's really cool with Zoom, if I were to turn it on here, is it can zoom an area of the screen. So if I move this around, you can kind of see, maybe if I do this right, you can kind of see where it's zooming parts of it. I can move this window around and kind of zoom it. Double tap, three times to move it, you know, and make it go away, triple tap, and do a few other th stuff. Do I want to zoom right there? Smart focusing. So there's all little regions down here and, and how much do I want to zoom it down here at the bottom? So if you really needed to, you could make screens that can zoom with that triple click option. So that's one thing you can turn on. Magnifier is pretty cool. So if I were to turn on magnifier, now if I triple click on the home button, 
we'll get the zoom, which allows me to zoom the screen. So you can kind of see I'm zooming on a box that my, my thing's looking on here, but if I were to zoom back, there you go. But there's the A10 Mini Pro. If I wanted to, I could zoom it in. So if they're having problems seeing stuff in general around them, it uses the camera and allows them to zoom. So that's if you need magnifier. Of course, there's different display accommodations. So if you wanted to, you could invert colors, smart invert, if that helps for their eyes. And you have a classic invert, which kind of does stuff with the colors here on the left side. You can kind of see how it shifted them all backwards. You can turn off auto brightness if you don't think they need it. There's color filters, which is nice. If they're colorblind, you can cut out different color features. Now, the reason I say if they're colorblind, you could be colorblind at any age, obviously, but sometimes as you do get older, macular degenerate, different things come into play that can also, if you were barely colorblind or almost right on that line, you could start to become more colorblind. I have a friend who developed vertigo way later in his life. So different things he can do to compensate for that, you know, as he gets older. Of course, you can still see that larger text. Larger text just allows, you can see how this is already a slide. It allows us to make that slider even bigger. So that allows us to make the text even larger than it was before. So see, we can go way crazy with it, which this is just a little too much for me, where before, if I did that, it could only get that big. Where if we have it at this part, it can go quite a bit bigger. You'll notice even on the text one, see how it's a much more sizable screen. So I like having that because it allows me to decide where I want that from a size point of view. Your button shapes, just change the shapes. Do you want to reduce the transparency and blurs on the background um, to make it easier to read? If you need to, you can turn that on, increase contrast, reduce motion. The on off labels are in certain areas if you want to see the labels. Now, you can also do some stuff with assisted touch or switch control. So, as you can see, here, this is actually a better. When you have the assisted touch, you can turn on different types of this button. What I love about this button that puts it here is if you have a broke home button, because we also had to do that. What happens if your button, your home button breaks on your iPad and you don't want to repair it? You can come in here and turn on assisted touch. Now I like to change these single and double taps because right now if I click this button, I get that every single time and maybe I just want it to go home. So instead I always change this first one to go home. And then I say double tap takes me to the open menu. And then you can have a long press one. So now this one takes me home where a double tap brings up the menu, the contract the, that you can only hit from the home. Now, I don't need that on this case, but if I had a broke home button or, or different things, if they're tactile isn't as well for that, that is something you can do. I'm gonna turn that back off, come back under here on accessibility. There is a lot you can do also from the speed. <laughs> Yes, my, my mom had a broke home button, so you're welcome, mom. But having said that too, you can change the click speed. So as we get older, you know, if I click home right now, I only have to click at one speed. You know, when I double click, you kind of got to go fast. You know, I got to click that relatively fast. What happens if I go slow? Well, that's what happens. So if I go slow instead and switch this to slow, now, if I go one, two, it still goes a little, but if I go one, two, it does it that way. So it's a little bit slower. Now, if I go slowest, now I can go, if I go one, two, see it brings it up. We can go even a little slower, one, two. Let's even try one, two, see? So we can, even go, see that's not quite slow enough, but there we go, one, two. 
So that allows us to change the click speed. So if, if grandma's not a necessarily slow or fast clicker, you can do that. You can also change the press and hold. If she's constantly holding onto it with her finger and going, and turning on Siri, <laughs> then you can come in here and turn off Siri. Since I don't know if grandma's gonna wanna use Siri yet, we're gonna keep that to the side and keep it on, but that's something you could do for your person if they're going, wow, I don't wanna talk to Siri. One, you can change the voice to Patrick if they'd rather talk with a guy. The other side of Siri is Patrick and you can talk to him, he has a nice accent. But you can come in here and turn that off. So the home button, when you press and hold, does not activate Siri. So we're gonna leave that one on here. The shake to undo, so you can shake and undo the last stuff when you, when you type. Well, for grandma, if you tend to shake your iPad by accident, you could disable this you know, undo from appearing. Well, we don't want shake to undo because she might shake. If you had someone with Parkinson's and they're, they're shaking a little, it would sit there and say, do you want to undo your last thing every time you're typing an email? No, no. So come in here and turn that off. You can also change some of the stuff on your keyboards, sticky keys. So if you do have a tendency to hold the key longer, you could turn on these you know, sticky keys or slow keys, key repeats. So if you press it too many times, there's lots of those options in there that you can play with. Obviously with Siri, you can always you know, type to Siri. So we'll listen for voice input when you press and hold the home button. So you can have type to, hands-free, always on. So there's, there's lots of options in here. From a hearing point of view, if they have those, you can turn on closed caption on all the medias. Lots of little things, but for, for older people, those are kind of the, the settings I would normally turn on is that bold text, larger text, and then come in here to this control panel and add that in as a control so that they can get to it. Whether they double click on there, you know, just like I said, we could change how that, but if they slide down from the top, you can put that there. You can even tell Siri to bring up those menus. So, you know, like I said, on here we go that way, but we have a few options when we get into that control panel. And because for me, I always have a hard time when the texts are on there. It seems like I don't see all the menus right when this is super large. So even just putting that up there as someone who's gonna have to come and work on it later, I'll increase the size for grandma, and then I'll come in if I ever have to work on it and go slide down from the top, slide down from this top corner like that, Bring this up and go, all right, I need to be able to read. So let's make this text a little bit more into the default. And what's nice is it tells you on the bottom default when you hit default, and then if you're making it smaller. But then when I'm done with it, I'll go, yep, there you go, Grandma. There's your text. Enjoy. And then when she's on this screen, what's nice is that text affects other areas. So if I come in on here, it will make internet larger for the, the URL up top. It doesn't change necessarily inside here as much. There are ways for you to kind of mess with that and change that in the Safari settings. But in general, it kind of leaves the web page, but it puts the address bar up here to where it is. And some sites don't have as much accessibility settings as others, but you'll see here, I can come in here, size that back down to maybe something that's a little bit more effective and it made it just a little bit smaller. But pop those in there, that's a good thing to do. That's a good setup for it. And you see how it instantly sized stuff back down. I'm gonna sit there and so that we can see this a little bit better, size it down even a little bit more. I'm not gonna go too cray cray on it, but we're gonna size that down a bit. Now, there are other things we can do in here, like I said, under Safari. There's all sorts of stuff, autofill, I'm not normally a big fan of having autofill on other than like your, her my info. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll come in here and I don't want to do it on screen and give too much of my grandma's info, but I'll come in here and say, maybe I don't want it to autofill credit cards because I don't want her putting her credit card on here. I'd rather use something like one password, but the autofill information, I'll come in here and set a card in her contacts with her information and then I'll let that be the autofill. So I will set that up for her. 
you know, there's already Safari suggestions. Those are normally pretty good, but if I needed to, I can come in here and turn off some of the tabs, you know, open new tabs in the background. Do you want to prevent cookies? There's little things you can do like that or to check for Apple Pay, give access to the microphone or camera on here. Most of these are pretty simple and safe, but I always do like to make sure the block pop-ups is turned on. It should be on by default, but make sure block pop-ups is on. That's a, a good thing to have for anyone, but especially when you're, when you're dealing with some of the older uh, generations using it. So you can come in here, like I said, you can slide and make all sorts of settings. The next big thing I like to do though is from the context point of view. One, I sync all our contacts to the cloud. Why? Because I need to make sure there's a copy. And if I had to log in online and check it for her, I can log into iCloud.com. It'll pop up a text on her phone or on her iPad and say, hey, you want to allow this? She'll say yes. And then I'll, I'll get in there and do that. But I set it to sync there and I only loaded in contacts or had my mom load in contacts on here that I knew she would use. So that was important that we didn't override this with too much stuff. If she's not a smartphone user, she's not used to the, the contacts. She doesn't need everything that she might have in a flip phone or in her big address book. So in here, we just have the people that she would most likely, at least till she gets used to it. So she, right now she maybe only has about 10 contacts. But the way we did that too was important. So when we slid down from that control panel, if you click and hold on that button up top, for airdrop, I switch this always to contacts only. That will only work though when you have contacts in there. So to get the first contact, to get my mom in there, I had to first click on this and switch it to everyone. You can alternatively get to that through this menu, go to general, airdrop, and switch it to everyone. So we switched it to everyone, at least enough to get my mom's contact in there, in which case I went to my phone or my contacts and clicked share. Once we get the first contact in there, we'll switch it to contacts only. Then you can just continue to airdrop them over to the new iPad because they'll be listed in there. So the, the default too, some to keep in mind when that happens is when it drops up on, on there, it won't be in there correctly. So when it's not in there correctly, you know, it'll, it'll come up and just say iPad. Well, my grandma has a, a fun nickname from my grandpa a long time ago, and it's Queenie. So we renamed this to Queenie iPad so that I wasn't just seeing iPad only when I airdropped. So airdrops in there, we can now go, and when I bring it up, we'll see Queenie iPad and we can drop it in there. It'll pop up, you know, after you choose share contact and you can do it that way and click save afterwards, and then it's in there. Otherwise, you could just go into your contacts and type one in as a new. So now her contacts won't necessarily be overrun, which I bring up, they'll show all my family contacts, and I don't think the internet needs to know a whole lot of my family contacts. Nothing against you guys, you already see some stuff pop up on the screen. I should probably set up some other test accounts, but that's just some of the settings that I would do on here. Now she's gonna get games, she's gonna get other stuff. I did set up her iPad and you know, Apple account to not have a credit card. Instead, I would rather give her gift cards. That's something I would do is load her up gift cards so it's never tied to her credit card because I don't know if grandma is gonna be used to monitoring the how much money is on there as she does it. The gift card, when it runs out, it goes, hey, you can't buy this anymore. If, especially if I don't tie a credit card to her Apple ID. So by doing that, I can just give her a gift card. It runs out, it'll stop. And then she's set till we get another gift card. If we tie it to a debit or credit card, the downside is grandma could just be sitting there on accident hitting or give it to a grandkid and they could hit, hey, yeah, I wanna buy all the gems on, on Solitaire or whatever. And it would just load them all through. And Next thing you know, we've spent $300 online. That we don't want. So that's why we're gonna not do that in this case. So those are just kind of a few tips and tricks of what I plan on doing. There'll be more, and we could do a whole episode on this. Obviously we've spent a chunk of time this time talking about it. But if you guys find that useful or would want more and why, 
just say yes, let me know, and I will go and work on one of those and, and get that a little bit more up there. If you have a specific scenario that you want, let me know and we'll work that in. Otherwise, we've kind of talked about a bunch of stuff and I don't know if you guys are getting bored with me or not. You know, you could be, I don't know. But uh, we're probably not gonna, talk, like I said, talk too long on this one. I already popped up the uh, YouTube page, if you didn't know, but you know what? Just cause I'm, I'm fun, we're gonna say, hey, this is the YouTube page and you could subscribe to us there or you can hover over this handy dandy QR link. Or if I'm really nice, you know, I could just pop it up in the chat and tell you, hey, if you wanna subscribe on YouTube, click that link. And you can come subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, then follow us back on this one. As for, there you go. Now you can see me. Hope you guys still like the new lights and all that. I was gonna kind of give you a quick rundown of that because I thought you might find that interesting too. If you're in the new live streaming world and all that, I was using a ring light, but you'll notice one fun thing about me. I'm a geek, which like most geeks means, I wear a prosthetic set of eyes. And the thing with the ring light, as you can tell when I look up here, I get the light in my eyes. If I turn my head over there, I get a light over there. If I turn my head over here, I get a light over there. Photography, things reflect. So we turned around and changed our lighting setup. I like ring lights, they're cool, but even better, if I switch over to camera here, is handy dandy version of the iPad. So I'm gonna switch back over to our iDevice here and switch over to the iPad and kind of give you a fun little rundown. You got like my little riser thing for the laptop. I need to get a little bit, uh, I have a new one, I just haven't messed with it. But we added a new light, a new wide light. So you can see the size of the old light, sorry it's bright. And this one's twice as wide. Why? Because it's my main light. It needs to be that way. And then we have a light for fill. So that's kind of our setup going on, but I especially want to show the ATEM Mini Pro. So this is the new ATEM. We're going to be doing a whole thing on it. You can kind of see how it's bringing in cool feeds. You can see me right here because it's showing my camera in a multi view. We can do all sorts of fun things where it's me on here, on there, or I can show only what's coming out of the program, which is nothing for it right now but you can kind of see fun stuff there, microphones coming in, all that, this is the fun new toy. So you're gonna see all sorts of cool stuff because we can bring in way more interfaces than our old stuff. So because of that, you're going to see and get to experience so much more. Along with the fact we've got some really, really, really fun picture and picture interfaces coming. So if I were to show you now, we can go like that and of course that. That looks terrible. Whoever did that did a terrible job. <laughs> Actually, you can see there's a screen share. This one got a little off because it's showing that camera, but we've got some cool interfaces coming, some cool interfaces still coming. So you'll see all of this stuff coming over time for our fun picture in picture. So you're, you're gonna see some new interfaces. Well, I don't know if we'll stick with the gray. We'll probably show the green like I've been messing around with the buttons. But for now, that's what we're doing. I'm gonna close that down because we don't need that. I don't need me distracted any more than I already am. Hopefully the audio sounds pretty good. Hopefully it looks in sync as I talk, maybe. I don't know. We'll find out in the replay because I'm still messing around with that. As we, like I said, as we work out more stuff, things just get a little bit better. Um, but again, if you guys have questions, just remember, we try to do this show weekly, at least weekly. If we need to do it a little bit more often. You just gotta let me know. And if there's a time that works better for everyone, let me know. If you know people who would be interested, just remember when you're watching this live, when you're watching this on the replay, share it to them. Let them ask their questions. Let them come follow us and also know when we're on. 
Otherwise, if you're catching it live, don't forget you can share it to your friends. There's these things called watch parties. You can do it that way. We don't get to see as much, but just share it and say, hey, you guys got tech questions. This is where to go. I'm not asking to tell you for it. I'm just saying in case they do have problems, I don't mind helping them. And it's just a lot of fun. I get to learn new things and mess around. So having said that, I hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. And make sure to keep sending those questions in. I've got a whole backlog of them that we're going to work our way through. If there's topics you want us to cover, make sure you let us know that too. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow. Pigeon, you know, send a pigeon. I don't care. Whichever way, let us know that you're liking it and what you'd want. We're going to keep trying to make this better and better. All right. You guys have a great Wednesday, and I will catch you guys soon.